Today, we're going to talk about the Adena, uh, a people that left behind these great earthen mounds uh, as a testimony of their civilization, their culture, their history. These include the Reynolds Mound of St. Mary's, West Virginia, the great Grave Creek Mound of Moundsville, West Virginia, and the Ohio River Mound of New Martinsville, West Virginia. Look at it. It's right there. It's right. It's at the bottom of the Ohio River. Yeah, this is going to be another Wetzel County uh, history video. And again, it's going to be weird. But there aren't going to be any unsolved murders in it, which I think might make it one of the first Wetzel County history videos not to be about murder. It's going to be about a historical burial mound that we just lost. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Today we are going to talk about the Ohio River Mound of New Martinsville, West Virginia, probably one of the more unique uh, known mounds in West Virginia uh, because, yeah, it's at the bottom of the Ohio River. Uh, where is it? How do we know it's there? How did it get there? Why is Wetzel County so weird about everything? We're going to answer three of those questions. I think you know which one we're not going to be able to answer today. In a lot diagonal from the Wetzel County Courthouse, which I'm just going to say looks like an impenetrable fortress for some reason. It's really cool uh, castle-looking courthouse. There is a sign for a Adena burial mound that isn't there. It's under the Ohio River. How did it end up there? And what records do we have to support that it exists? So one of the best accounts for where this mound is located and a little bit of information from it uh, begins in 1901 with John C. McEldowney Jr.'s A History of Wetzel County, West Virginia. Uh, if you've watched my Jennings Gang video, there's been a couple other videos I've done about Wetzel County where I have to cite a history of Wetzel County, West Virginia by McEldowney. You'll be aware I'm not a huge fan of McEldowney. Uh, the reason why this book still exists has nothing to do with uh, how good the book is or how historically accurate the book is. It has everything to do with the fact that McEldowney donated a copy of the book to the New York Public Library System, who later uh, digitized and archived it. And that's really the only reason this book is still available to this day. If you go onto any search engine and just type in a history of Wetzel County, West Virginia, click on the little book section, it will come up. You can, anyone with an internet connection can read this book in 2021. That does not mean it's a good book. That does not mean it's a historically accurate book. And McEldowney basically had this to say about the mound. Uh, there was a mound at one time situated on the shore of the Ohio River on the farm now owned by John C. McEldowney. A mound which was possessed of a rare antiquity. First of all, that whole paragraph, one sentence. The mound which is now part of the Ohio River was at one time as high as the bank is today it being very much isolated from the shore. It was often used as a place of resort to boys from the years 1840 to 1850. So even as far back as the 1850s, the mound at times was basically level uh, with the shore along the Ohio River. Now, you might be wondering, why can't I just go there and look for the mound, like it should still be semi-visible, right? No, because at this point, there weren't the locks and dam systems on the Ohio River like there is today. If you go back to that time period and look at photographs uh, from around this time until like the early 
20th century, there were times when the Ohio River got dry enough that you could walk to the other side. There were winters that the Ohio River froze so solid that you could walk to Ohio. I don't know why you would want to walk to Ohio, but you could. And that was up until about 1910, whenever they started the Ohio River Dams Project. This project was meant to kind of widen and deepen the Ohio River to make it easier to export things like coal and steel from West Virginia, from the Pittsburgh area, and really improve transportation um, up and down the Ohio River. The first stages of this project wrapped up in 1929 with some 50 wooden dams being built on the Ohio River. And just so it, like, doesn't hurt my brain, like, how much effect did these wooden dams have on the actual, like, height and depth control of the Ohio River? I'm just going to assume that they were built by, like, beavers. Like, the United States contracted, not, like, normal, I'm talking about, like, the big, beefy, like, Canadian beavers that, like, the Seven Years' War was fought over. Like, that's who built these wooden dams. So even though the historical marker for this mound is across from the courthouse, you would think it'd be somewhere near there. And you'd be wrong because we're talking about Wetzel County. Uh, according to accounts, the mound is located a ways out from the fairground. Now the oldest record I can find of where the old fairground was is a hand-drawn map of New Martinsville done in 1899 by one T.M. Fowler. And these maps are actually really cool. Uh, you will regularly see them pop up, um, reprints of them in antique shops around the mountain state. If you're ever in the area, keep an eye out for them. If you see a really intricate, like hand-drawn uh, town map, it was probably done by T.M. Fowler. The T.M. in T.M. Fowler actually stands for Thaddeus Mortimer which is probably one of the most, like you know that kid was born with a top hat and a monocle. And if you look at this map of New Martinsville, you can actually see a little bit of the fairground. And then the map just abruptly ends. Like the mound, if it was visible in this picture, would be like maybe two inches by half an inch right outside the border of this picture, which is kind of frustrating. Um, but it definitely adds to this overall mystery of trying to figure out exactly where this mound is supposed to be. So where do experts put the mound at today? Uh, basically, they say it's probably somewhere under the Ohio River in between North and McEldowney Street. Yeah, those McEldownies. The guy who wrote the book about Wetzel County. Someone in his family, maybe even him, has a street named after him in New Martinsville. There's also this paragraph about how one uh, Captain Robert McEldowney found a solid gold statue uh, in or around the mound area. And the Smithsonian was apparently like super interested in trying to get hold of this thing. And he wouldn't sell it to them. But what happened to this solid gold idol? Uh, well, apparently the McEldownies, they wouldn't sell it to the Smithsonian, but then they just let this guy borrow it, who abruptly disappeared, and this historical artifact was just lost forever. Yeah, that seems like a good excuse if I was ever going to make up a story about an ancient priceless artifact that didn't exist. Yeah, I let some guy borrow it, and I... I don't know what happened to him. This, this is why I have such a love-hate relationship with uh, McEldowney is because at one aspect, I see this guy who wrote a book about Wetzel County that is still widely available to this day. Like, I want to be super critical of him, but at the same time, it kind of gives me hope because I'm not the most intelligent, credible person either. So maybe in like a hundred, 150 years, there could still be someone talking about me, inciting me for being not that intelligent and not 
incredible, which... Anyway, that's a little bit of history about the New Martinsville Mound. The mound that is located at the bottom of the Ohio River. Uh, if you enjoy weird history like this, like, leave a comment, subscribe. I love doing West Virginia history. I love doing weird uh, history. I love talking about Wetzel County. There are many, many, many other uh, stories and histories from Wetzel County. Until next time, don't forget to stay wild, stay wonderful, consider visiting Wetzel County, and uh, I'll talk to you later.